GM. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. And I've just got a couple more things to set up. A bit rushed today. And I didn't realise I didn't mute my mic there when I was playing that song, so you could probably hear me on the keyboard, which is an amateur mistake, Williams. Amateur. Now, what we're going to do today, um, we are going to do a lesson. Um, and this is the third lesson that I, I've done um, with Bjorn, yay Bjorn. And I'm just going to cover up his where, where his face is going to be with a, a lovely picture of me taken in, in the summer of England last year. Um, very fetching frock I was wearing there. Um, because it was such beautiful weather, I just had to free myself a little bit. You know, free my, free my legs, feel that air across my skin. But anyway, we're going to have... Bjorn join us very soon and um, it should be fun because we're, we're, we've done two of these before and the idea of this is um, I'm obviously a grandmaster and I'm gonna do a bit of a lesson a kind of relaxed lesson with Bjorn if you haven't seen this before um, and we're gonna Bjorn is gonna play one or two games on chess.com at a longer time limit we're going to turn his Skype off when he plays. And I'm going to commentate on what I think he's doing correctly and what I think he's doing wrong. After the game, we're going to get him back on the call. We're going to try to get into his mind and work out what he was thinking, because that's the key. Uh, I mean, it's like if you're taught bad habits, you've got to get rid of those bad habits. This is such an important thing in chess, because if you keep those bad habits forever, then they're just going to fester and they're like poison, they're like chess poison as you develop as a chess player. So I'm going to try to find any bad habits that Bjorn has, try to get rid of them as we go. Um, thank you Daniel Rhodes uh, for subscribing. Um, so yeah, so it should be fun and Bjorn, like we said before, is about 1400 strength, maybe a bit more. He's been playing, he's just got back into chess in the last three years, so I think a lot of you watching this stream will be similar strength to him so hopefully you'll be able to relate to his play and the things that I'm going to try to suggest to him as to improve um, right but first of all let's get Bjorn on the show and let's get rid of that very fetching picture of me uh, in the summer the summer of love the summer of love okay where's my picture gone it's disappearing there we go we can put the little picture up there for now so let's see if we can get Bjorn on the call. Uh, da, 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 da. Triple gaffle. We, thank you for subscribing. Bjorn! <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Simon? It's going fantastically. Um, and let's just hope that everyone can uh, hear and see you okay. So if everyone can just confirm that in the Twitch chat that they can hear and see. I'm, I'm sure they can see you, but if they can hear you all right, Bjorn, That'd be great. So, so Bjorn, great to have you back on, mate. How are things going? Uh, great, great. Lot to do and lot, lot of work to do these days. Uh, two weeks from opening uh, our escape room. So, yeah, had a trial run this last weekend, which went very well. So now it's just about to collect all the stuff and do the last finish touches. So, so hopefully we should be ready in a couple of weeks. Brilliant. So, so Bjorn is creating escape room in Frederikstad in uh, right. Norway, mm -hmm. which I've actually been to. Um, I'll tell you, I think I told you, Bjorn, I went there. I had a friend, Torbjorn, and I went to Frederikstad. He was at university there. And I think while he was at university, Bjorn, it, there was only five males and something like 150 females at the university. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was doing nursing or something like that. Does that sound about uh, right at the university there? Yeah, I think they have like nursing. Um... Uh, school uh, university yeah. type of thing here so yeah I actually um, I just moved from Oslo I sold my apartment there uh, and I moved and I'm now like living 50 meters from from this uh, high school or um, university of nursing so <laughs> <laughs> I mean Bjorn when, when my friend by accident I mean I, mean, I obviously course. didn't know about this before I moved but of course so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I remember Bjorn when, when my friend told me the the, the sort of 1% uh, men 99% females it seemed like a natural place to go and have a little yeah, holiday yeah. in <laughs> so we, we had yeah. a we, we had a nice time and yeah. Uh, uh, so Bjorn, this is the third time you've been on, and um, yeah. we're we're going to probably do the same as usual. 
where I think we played a 15 minute game, didn't we last time? Are you, are you happy to, to to do that this time? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to try and find you first um, before you uh, before you start playing. So uh, I've got to remember how to do this. So um, I set up 15 with no increment, right? Um, or 15 with increment is probably okay as well. Whatever you prefer, um, you know, to, to do. So let me just follow you first. And um, okay. I'm game of 15 and see see what happens. And yes, try try see if you can get a game, and I'll follow you now. And so what we do, Bjorn, and everyone watching, um, we're going to basically Bjorn is going to play a game. I'm going to turn the Skype off while he plays. Um, yeah. So Bjorn won't be able to hear us. He'll just be concentrating on the game. We're gonna yeah. we're then after the game, get him back on and get his thoughts. So something like that, Bjorn. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, um, cool. And how's your chess being in the last week or so since we did our last uh, our last stream? Have you gone up three hundred rating points yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't played any long games, so so I guess I can use that as an excuse for not uh, not having improved my rating. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, <laughs> it should be better. Hopefully, it should be. We'll see. But you still, you still got the love for chess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And and I must say, I was watching. Well, I was watching your uh, your stream uh, against uh, Bartholomew, as I'm sure a lot of the people oh, in the chat did as well. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> oh, no. It was just, <laughs> I mean, I've never seen so many people feel so bad for one guy. <laughs> oh dear, I'm trying to forget about that. You're gonna make you can... for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then <laughs> your your kind of uh, return on uh, on title Tuesday that was just yeah. that was one of the most awesome uh, performances uh, I've seen so that was just fun. <laughs> it's been an up and down week or so. Can we just say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's stick with that. <laughs> So Bjorn's talking about the stream I did when I had a rivals match with John Bar following me, and uh, uh, well, I was a bit wasted. Let's just put it that way, and um, I, I kind of embarrassed myself quite badly. But then I, the next stream I did, I kind of thought I had to uh, try to make up for it, and it's on mm. my YouTube channel. I played the title Tuesday event, and I, I had I had, a, had a good some very very exciting games and a good tournament. So yeah. uh, so I kind of made up for it a little bit. And, definitely, uh, definitely. And, uh, and I have and I have apologised to uh, to uh, John Bar following me, and he said it's absolutely fine. Just if anyone's worried, he's totally cool with taking yeah. my rating points. It's all good. So it's <laughs> one of those things I don't want to repeat too many times, Bjorn. <laughs> so, one of those things I don't want to repeat too many times. <laughs> the odd occasion now and again, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. we never plan for these things to happen, but you know. <laughs> I know. I know. They just happen occasionally. They do just happen yeah. occasionally. Um, I was just about to say, Simon, uh, I think this, um, like you say in the master, um, the master method one, I think, that uh, players at, at my level should kind of stick to one opening mm -hmm. uh, and kind of concentrate on that. Uh, and I mean, these streams could get a little bit boring if I play the same opening every time. What do you think about that? Should I try? I mean, I have looked at some other... Of your DVDs, obviously, and and but I might not be. Uh, I, I I was yeah, I was thinking the same. Think I stick with the the same opening, or should I try different things? Well, I was, I was thinking the same, Bjorn, because we, we've had um, for those who who missed the first two streams I did with Bjorn, we had a lot of um, Black Lion openings. And yeah. I was thinking this earlier today, and, and my my conclusion was Bjorn that I think you should just stick with the Black Lion because if it's okay. a serious attempt. At you trying to understand the black line better okay some people might find it a bit repetitive but mm -hmm. i i do really think and this is my first bit of advice to anyone out there and it probably goes against a, a, what a lot of you guys do in order to improve i think you should try to find an opening first of all that suits your style when you're starting in chess and mm -hmm. so many people play openings that don't suit their style so you need to try to work out what that is um, you yeah. know, if you're an aggressive player, play an aggressive opening, and and once you've done that, I I, I would recommend everyone just sticks with one opening with white, one opening against e4, and one opening against d4. So I think if we're going to do it, Bjorn, I'd say stick with your normal openings. We're trying to get you, okay. you know, we'd we'd do that because maybe we can see if you've learnt from the last ones, and uh, we can yeah. still you know build yeah. up on it. And I think it would be actually more useful to do that, Bjorn. Play your natural stuff, uh, I think. Okay. So I'm going to go for that. Um, I'll stick with that. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So, Bjorn, are you ready to rock and roll? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I'm going to start a search now. Uh, okay. So, this is a custom search, so it might take a little bit longer, but we'll we'll see. No worries. Otherwise, I'll have to, 
Otherwise, I will have to do like a 15, 10. Those are sure. uh, often easier to find. Yeah, you can uh, try 15, 10 as well. 15, 10 should be, uh, should be okay as well. So, um, so Bjorn is now searching for a game. And as soon as Bjorn gets a game, um, we and it'll be nice to play someone around your rating, you know, because um, I think that's or even higher. I, I yeah. always think you know someone higher rated is always better to play because that's mm. where we learn learn the most from. Um, have you played much online recently, Bjorn? Yeah, I have. Um, okay, but most mostly blitz. I haven't like had time to sit down and have uh, these longer games. Sure. So. So I played Blitz and I've um, I followed. Uh, I follow uh, obviously Fiona's stream and she's doing this uh, Blitz and Bullet tournaments, yep. uh, which I try to uh, to uh, um, play. Which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Blitz, Blitz and Bullet. Yeah, I, I can't. I'm Bullet. You know how slow I am, Bjorn. I mean, do you think... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm so slow. I'm actually quite quick when I play on a board, but I, I've never mastered the the skill of the mouse. You know, uh, it, it hasn't quite quite. <laughs> I'm quite got the hang okay, of it yet. So, so we have a game going. Actually. Okay, Bjorn, I'll, I'll speak to you afterwards. Okay, so excellent. Okay, cool. okay. See you later, Bjorn. Okay, you got white. Good stuff. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, so Bjorn is now playing, and. Um, We've explained how this is going to work, so I'll turn Bjorn off for now, and I'm going to, I'm going to go with, uh, that's not Bjorn, by the way, that picture now. So Bjorn is playing the London system, great to see. So this is an opening which um, I'm a bit of an expert in, and Bjorn basically plays openings that I've done DVDs on. And this is a very good way, Bishop F4, to Bishop F4, playing an opening that doesn't require much theory. Now C5 is one of the most aggressive responses. There's two ways to play against this. When you play the London system, I always try to create this what I call a pyramid first because this is your this is your main point of contact, and this is the pawn where you want to um, you want to keep that pawn nice and solid in the center of the board. And the main move I give here is e3. Um, I prefer e3 in this position, but you've always got to think: do you go e3 first or c3? One move you have to watch out for when black moves the c-pawn when you play the London system is queen b6. So Bjorn has played e3. There was also a very interesting gambit line with e4 there. Um, okay, but we're going now into... Um, black has decided to exchange there. Black playing very quickly. And I think around here Bjorn should just finish just consolidating the pawn on d4. So I want to think he'd play c3 here one thing you don't want to do too quickly here is play knight to f3 why don't you want to do that because chess is about restraining your opponent and pushing your own ideas if you go knight to f3 you're going to walk into bishop g4 and walk into the pin at the moment this bishop can't go to g4 it can't pin you so i would probably if i was white delay this move and try to go bishop d3 if i get a chance because then my opponent's bishop may become a bad piece. I mean, if I can make black play e6 in any position, I'm gonna be a little bit better because the bishop on c8 will be trapped. So that is why now uh, black has moved the bishop out. So when your opponent does something like this, and I think this is following the Magnus Carlsen game, you have gotta think, what are the disadvantages of my opponent's move? A lot of weaker players never think about their opponent's moves and how to take advantage of it. So what are the disadvantages of this move? I would say b7 is now a bit of a weakness. So one of the things in the London system, if this bishop comes out quickly, a very standard response is queen to b3. And this would be a very clever move because you're just asking black the question, what are you gonna do with your pawn? You've weakened that pawn, I'm gonna to try to take advantage of it. So yeah, you know, Bjorn hasn't done that. He's gone for a more simple move, but this is one thing you've gotta get in the habit of doing. Before you think of your own moves, Really concentrate on your opponent's move and think of the weaknesses it undefends b7. See if you can take advantage of it and also see if your opponent's what he's planning to do and if it's going to worry you. So, okay, so normal development now. And Bjorn's got to think where he's going to move this bishop because normally in the London system the bishop would want to go to d3, but it's not so easy to get it there. Now, one way Magnus Carlsen, when he played this against Wojtacek, that's a very strange move. Um, now again, if I was white here, I'd be thinking, why is my why did my opponent play that move? And it's it, you shouldn't move the same piece twice in the opening. And for me, that looks really weird. The only thing I can think of is trying to do e5, but I don't believe 
that e5 is going to be any good here. I mean, a normal way that Magnus Carlsen played with against the bishop here, another way to try to take advantage of this is knight to h4. So this is the other move, that if your opponent puts a bishop on f5, you should be aiming to do. Put your knight on h4, where it can aim to take advantage of that bishop. So I would be looking at knight h4, but then I'd be analyzing, can black then play e5? This hasn't been played, I'm just looking at this. And then I'd look at this position, knight takes here, pawn takes here, and hopefully I'd then see that queen e2 check will lead to a very good position for white. So let's go back to the game. Um, and he's now gone queen b3. That's good, I'm happy he's done that. He's gone for the secondary plan, trying to take advantage of this. So maybe this is black's idea. That's why Bjorn could have played it one move earlier. So what should we be thinking here? Well, black has defended his b pawn with a knight. So my natural thought here would be, can I get rid of that knight? And I would be looking now at a4, a5. I would leave my bishop. Um, I mean, I could go bishop e2 and castles first. That's a safer approach. But I'm not, my king's not really in any danger because the position is quite closed. You don't need to um, worry as much about your king when there are no open lines. Okay, this is a bit of an open line, but black can't get on it unless he can play e5. And he can't play e5 because we've got one, two, three pieces controlling that square. So I would, I would be tempted to go a4, a5. That would be a very crafty and I think good idea here. Other things you could do is maybe, I mean, I like a4 because if black plays a5 now, this square b5 is extremely weak. It wasn't as weak before because black could play a6, but if I can force this move, now I come in with bishop b5 and my opponent can no longer play a6. And here, things could get very dicey because the knight could come in here. Let's say black plays e6, knight e5, and we're already gaining a lot of pressure. So I think a4 uh, would be a very good move. Okay, so Bjorn has played bishop b5, and now I'd be wondering here how he was going to meet a6. Maybe he would just take the knight, but instead black has played f6. And black's playing some very peculiar moves. This move to me seems suspicious. Black is trying to open the center, but you shouldn't open the center when your king is still there. You've got to think about the really main idea. You know, you can't do crazy things until you've done the normal stuff. And I just don't feel that g5, g5 is interesting. And against h5, white has to probably play h4. But in, 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 in theory, this idea should not be working when your king is here. You only play aggressive ideas like this generally when your king is safe or um, you know you have good development. So black is now changing his mind and going to castle kingside. And the bishop on g7 is now ugly, but maybe black's gonna try to play e5. So if I was white here, I'd be thinking maybe it's about time I try to think of ways of punishing my opponent for playing a move like this. And actually, I think my favorite move here, h4, is very interesting because h4 is trying to open up the king's side a little bit. If he takes on h4, my knight gains a very nice square here. If my opponent pushes on with this move, then my knight can come back to h2. And I quite like that. I like his pawn here because I get control of f4. So I'd be thinking of h4 at some point. I mean, I'm assuming black should castle now. If black doesn't castle now, what's he going to do? What's he going to play here um, in this position? He probably has to castle. So these are just my thoughts. Like I say, we're going to get the interesting thing with this is we're going to get Bjorn's thoughts when he comes on. So I'm, sh I'm throwing you with my thoughts. We're going to see how he's thinking. And I'd like you to compare how you're thinking about the position as well, because I know we spend a lot of time on one game, but you might notice common things that you are doing wrong and the way you should be thinking. Just to improve as a player, it's changing those basic things. And we've had some very tactical games with Bjorn. This is a bit more positional, but um, hopefully, even if you take one thing away that might be relevant, then that is, that's something we're looking to do to help you improve your chess. Um, okay, so um, Bishop g6. So Bjorn has tried to improve one of his pieces. That's quite, I quite like that idea as well because the knight on d2 wasn't doing anything, so he's trying to bring his knight to a better square. 
but he does have to be careful of f5 f4 and one thing you've really got to do is always be aware of your opponent's possibilities not just your own possibilities is the knight good there it could be good there if we can get I'm realizing take my headphones off now it took me a while to navigate that one it could be good again if you can get rid of the knight here that's why i really like this a4 move that's why i really like this a4 move because i'm trying to get rid of this knight and if black does play a5 the knight is going to be weaker because it's not defended anymore um now a critical move here would be f5 so what is going to happen if f5 so you've got to before i you know if i was going to play knight to e3 i would really have made sure i have f5 covered so there are two ideas against f5. You can try to calculate this as well. This is what you should be calculating before you play knight to e3. f5, knight takes g5. And then f4, pin it, forking. And what's a good move there? Can you guys see it? So f5, let's try to follow this and in your head. When you're analyzing your games afterwards, do not move the pieces. Try to analyze in your mind's eye. Even if you have a board there, Analyze it like you would in a real game. You can't move the pieces around in a real game, so don't do it afterwards. It's all about practicing. Knight to e6 is correct. Um, chess fun and h branny, and that should be good enough. I mean, we should still calculate a bit more. Queen to queen to d6 in that position. So we're looking at f5, knight takes g5, f4, knight to e6, queen to d6. I mean, that position is still still a little bit murky, I think. A little bit murky. Is it? I mean, is there anything clear there that you can do? Um, it's not entirely clear. So maybe Weld Mead and the Black is, is thinking about this. So could you follow that line? F5 critical, because it's trying to fork a piece. And the first, you should always, when you're analyzing lines like this, when, when there's a tactic, because at the moment there hasn't really been many tactics, so we're just doing positional things trying to improve our position as white black should be doing the same but as soon as it gets tactical that's when you need to slow down spend more time and he has gone f5 so this is very interesting now bjorn here time management is very interesting he should spend at least i would say one two minutes here because he probably missed this move and this is a key moment now this is a very interesting moment because if you play this move fast your time management is completely wrong because in chess, you probably only have two or three key moments in the game. If you can navigate those moments well, you're on your way to winning the game. It really is. You can play other moves quite quickly, but when you're faced with lots of tactics like this, that's when you should say, right, tactics are coming, slow the hell down, calculate. So what is this line? Knight takes g5, so let's try and analyze, f4, and then knight to g6, attacking the queen, but the queen comes to d6. So you guys try to evaluate that position yourselves and see if you can think of a good line there. Thank you, 69 Mr. Fister, interesting name, for subscribing with Tip Twitch Prime. And of course, you can all subscribe with Twitch Prime, if you so wish, for free. Um, but I have to warn you, you can only subscribe to one channel. So we're going to see this, but I really think this is very unclear. The other option that Bjorn had was to try to gain control of this square. And did he spend long enough on that move? I I would have probably spent a bit longer unless I'm very confident that it's a good, good move. So um, if you play hunger, um, hunger there, if you play knight takes g7 at the end of the line, so, oh, queen, that's a horrible move. That's a horrible move. I mean, that is just, that's you can't play like that. That's a typical mistake that amateurs play. They, they, they see a scary move and they freak out. They go, oh, they panic. And they go, I have to stop that move. The best way to play chess is aggressively. You can, don't try to play, this is just a purely defensive move. And now, if I was white, I would just stop f4. I would play pawn to f4. And then my knight can always come back. Pawn to f4 is a great positional move because I keep this pawn stuck here. My opponent's bishop becomes dead. Pawn to f4 is probably positionally winning for Yebjorn. But this is another very important thing. You guys might have this as well. You know, try to lose your sense of fear when you're playing, but back up your brave play with good calculation. So many amateur players that I see, one of their biggest weaknesses is they're quite afraid. 
They're afraid of sacrificing pawns. They're afraid of their opponents. When their opponent plays a scary looking move like knight g5, they panic and they defend. What black should have played there, whoa, I don't like that move either. Isn't f4? I mean, you should have stopped f4 because f4 is where all of black's counterplay is coming. White should have played f4 there, definitely. And now if black plays this move, his bishop comes into the game. This pawn becomes an attack. The queen can come in. So I don't like the. I don't like this. This was maybe on Yebjorn's side. Chess. I always say it's about two things: pushing your own ideas, but stopping your opponent's ideas, keeping your opponent as caged as you can. And you want to keep this bishop caged behind that pawn. You want to keep that pawn caged. You want to keep the queen caged. And now, after f4, bishop h4, black's position, black has fantastic compensation here, I would say. Um, and um, d -d 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 tries a Guen, um is saying, should I use Twitch Prime to subscribe to your channel or to or to John Bartholomew's? You know what? I'm going to leave that to you, sir. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about John because I can't. He's such a lovely guy and he's such a good um a uh, youtuber streamer and player so if you decide to use your twitch prime to subscribe to him so be it if you use your twitch prime to subscribe to ben feingold the never come here again in the words of the old english sage never show your face here again boy um but if you if you if you decide to go for uh Bartholomew, that's okay um right now i thought maybe a queen g4 move might have been more scary black again is a little bit he's a little bit reluctant to play the most active moves i mean if we go back one move if i was black i always look at the most active moves first when you're looking at your process of elimination your moves you should be analyzing then um i would be looking at this move because this creates a threat it gets my queen in the danger zone i maybe can go f3 and checkmate this would be the key move and i'd be interesting Interested to know what Yebjorn had up his sleeve against that. After bishop f6, Yebjorn has now played knight to f3. And the more pieces Yebjorn can exchange, I think the better his position becomes because he's a pawn up. But I'm still a little bit concerned about the f pawn coming down into Yebjorn's position. Um, Okay, so we're going to have a look at all the tactics later on, and I know I know with these lessons we spend a lot of time. Um, okay, now he's played Queen G4, but a bit late. We spend a lot of time looking at the game, explaining the game, and some people watching this might think oh, that's a bit boring. I can understand that because, in some ways, getting better at chess is not that much fun. <laughs> which sounds kind of crazy um you know playing blitz is much more fun than uh studying chess than looking at your errors than playing long play games i would much rather play a blitz game um than analyze a long play game or really read a book it's much more fun but if you're serious about getting better at this game then you need to do the things that we're doing here and i think what we do after five of these lessons because Another thing, if you're looking for a coach, you should be very wary of. This is a tip from me. I mean, I never really had a coach. My dad played chess and he helped me out and he was my coach as such. Um, I never really had any other coach. You don't need a coach. Chess is a very personal game. It does help if you've got a good coach. Obviously, it will take you to that next level. I hope I can help out Bjorn in this way. But it's not something that will happen immediately. You know, to get better at chess, it will, it, it will take... It can take you know years before you see any improvement but at some point it should click if you've done it the right way so what i'm thinking about doing the coaching with bjorn is we're going to take five of his games we're going to do this and then after that i'm going to set him some specially um special puzzles and i'm then going to put the pressure on him so rather than watching him play i will um i think specifically uh get his thoughts on some positions. So that'll be something we'll do in the future. And hopefully what I'm thinking in a year's time, we'll see a big improvement in Bjorn's play. But one warning I was gonna say, be very careful about getting a coach because honestly, 
a lot of coaches out there, I don't think they're just there to take your money. I, 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 you know, I, I've, I know this from speaking to some. You can get some great ones, but you, you know, I mean, I would say it may be better. By the way, thank you, Davis Wong, for the shout out and uh, whatever it is, uh, bits. But one thing I'd be very careful of is, uh, I mean, coaching costs a lot of money. Mm. To get a grandmaster can cost something like hundred dollars an hour. Thank you, Trees Aguan, for subscribing. Is it worth spending $100 on an hour or could you use that to buy loads of DVDs? What's better? Or loads of books? Find out where you learn best and do it that way. Coaching can be great, but it's you don't actually need it. Money can be spent in a better way. And if you do get a coach, make sure you've got a bloody good coach who knows exactly what he's doing. Know what, if anyone promises you fast results, then tell them to stick it up their bottom because it's not gonna happen. They're trying to, they're, they're trying to take your money. Okay, back to the game. Uh, thank you for subscribing there. Um, and chess is hard, but you know we can all get better, so don't ever lose faith, but keep it enjoyable. These are my little tips. Make sure you enjoy playing, keep it fun. Um, if you ever lose your interest, try something different. Try to spice it up. Don't play too much Blitz. Use Blitz as more of an enjoyment thing. Anyway, back to the game. So Yabjorn has managed to defend this pressure in a, a very good way. And I like the way Yabjorn has now been exchanging off pieces because when you are um, material up, um, it makes sense to exchange pieces because your extra pawn means a lot more when we come into the later stages of the game. It can be a pass pawn. Um, and also, who's got the better pawn structure here? Black has a lot of pawn weaknesses. I will say two things you look at in a position, two things mainly and this is okay you should look at your opponent's ideas you should restrain your opponent and push your own ideas but when you actually look at the position two things you should do you should look at the pawn structure which i call the skeleton and then you should look at the pieces which i call the organs um the pawn structure is what keeps the position together holds it together um and the organs is what keeps it pumping and moving so first of all, you look at the pawn structure, and here, black has these horrible pawns. Now I pointed these pawns out because they're all weak. This pawn on d5 cannot be defended by another pawn, so later on it's weak. These pawns here, double pawns, later on weak. Even this h7 pawn is weak in some cases. White's pawns are very nice. They, these are what we call sort of connected, they, they link into each other, so they can all defend each other later on, and so can these pawns. So structurally speaking, this is um, a very nice position uh, for uh, Bjorn. But how do we make progress? I mean, maybe this is something here. Um, this is, uh, by the way, this is not a picture of Bjorn. Uh, well, obviously you know that. I mean, what kind of moron am I to say that? Do I have to remind you? No, no, I don't. It's me in a dress. That's on my, I do that on a Saturday. I do that on a Saturday. Teresa Guillon, um, I can't probably pronounce your name. That is my big weakness. I'm not gonna try to claim money by trying to pronounce your name right. If you wanna subscribe, it's great because it does help me do more of these. Uh, I wanna honestly help you guys improve while hopefully helping you enjoy chess. But um, if you do subscribe, it's lovely. Okay, so anyway, back to the game. Bjorn's getting a little bit shorter time. Um, so he's got to move quicker. Now, what would I be thinking here? Would I be thinking along the lines of pieces? Can I do pawns? Can I do anything? I don't want to move my pawns because my pawns are very nice at the moment. So I've got to think of my organs, my pieces, and I've got to think which of my pieces as white do I not like? And I'm thinking here that I'm actually, this bishop will get kicked away with something like a6 anyway. This is also the move I was going to mention. Rook on the seventh rank. Nimzovic claimed this was good, and it is good. You have an open file. There's nothing wrong with simple moves. Famous quote of Tony Miles. Um, if you can play simple chess, don't complicate. I mean, I play complicated chess often because I enjoy it, so I find it fun. So you've got to play in the style you find fun. But when you get into a position like this, you have to play what the position tells you to play. You can't force tactics. Um, in a position where you have to play positionally. You just have to play positionally. And, and I really like this move because Bjorn is now hitting a pawn. Bjorn is now getting ready to take over the open file and he's improving his pieces. He's not touching his skeleton. 
He's looking at his pieces and he's thinking, how can I improve my pieces? So this is a very natural, simple, yet good move. And he's also in some positions getting ready to take here. One thing I always do, and I think grandmasters do all the time, is always stop your opponent's counterplay. And Bjorn is doing a fantastic job of that. I mean, I don't like the way Black's played that move because he's caged in both of his rooks. The only thing I'd like to stop here now is a6. Or do I need to stop that? Because if a6 is played, then the knight becomes very weak. So I would just play, get the only piece in the game that's not doing anything, get the rook on a1 onto the open file. Simple is good. And we always should think, what can our opponent move? And a very high level way of thinking is to try to run our opponent's outer moves. If you're ever able to do that in any of your games, I'd say you're at least an 1800 level player. If you can ever run your opponent out moves, it's more actually of a 2200 level player. It's something that's a very high level tactic. Because at the moment, this rook can't really move. This rook can't really move. This bishop can't really move. And I would here, as Bjorn, be looking at the most active move, great move. But as long as you have calculated what happens if knight to c8. So this is the only move I'd be worried about now, knight to c8. So if he plays this, you've got to have an answer to that before you play queen d6. So I really hope Bjorn had an answer to that. Otherwise, he should have played it safe with queen c5. Don't complicate unless you are totally sure. And I think this is a much better move because, like I said earlier, always play the most active moves you can. Always, always, always. No messing about, play active. So what are we gonna do after knight c8? Well, I think there could be a checkmate. Queen d8 check, so let's analyze this in our heads as we would in a game. Knight c8, queen d8 check, king to g7. And then do we have rook takes f7 check, king takes f7. And it, this position looks very strong somehow. I have bishop d7 to e6. I have queen e8 check, but this requires very careful calculation. And this is where, this is the hard part of chess, where you have to, have to calculate. I see Jobius is saying after um, knight c8, this has been played, so I'm very interested now. It's Bjorn, I hope he saw this. He's got three minutes. Spend two minutes, Bjorn, working this out. Take a deep breath. This is critical because you should not complicate. He should have had this worked out already unless you've seen it. But it looks to me that with all the active white pieces and black's pieces being in such a bad position, it just seems to me that white must be doing a great job. So I'm just gonna calculate here. Um, okay, queen d8, rook there check was the other line. And I think actually, as Jobius pointed out, rook e8 was better. So how is Yebjorn gonna do this now? Now there's a couple of options. Rook takes here was what I was thinking of. And when we analyze the game, we're gonna look at this. Rook takes here, king takes. And then I have moves like rook e8, bringing another piece in. Or I really like the move, bishop d7, attacking the queen and then bring the bishop to e6. So I think this should still be winning, but Yebjorn now has to just spend that little bit of extra time. There might even be a good move like knight h4 here, trying to push that queen onto a worse square. Is that gonna be very good? Is there a win? I'd love to see Yebjorn finish in some style here. This move is good. I feel, but it's a little, okay, well, Black's just blundered there. So Yebjorn didn't want to calculate too much and he kept things simple. Now, maybe a little bit lazy there because I would have been tempted to try to, oh, why didn't he take the piece? Double blunders. So we'll discuss it later. How do you avoid blundering? Because blundering in chess is one of the most common things that, uh, and now this, this is still winning for white. Don't panic, you can take here and take the knight, the knights defend the rook. But blundering is one of the most common things that I know lower rated players also do. So we've got to think, how can we avoid blundering? Uh, and we'll discuss this um, uh, when we get Bjorn back on. But at the moment, I think this is pretty much game over now because you can easily defend the knight with queen e7 and yay Bjorn has played a very nice game. I mean, what's his rate? He's only 1650. I'll tell you, give me six months, it'd be 2,000 on here. I hope 2,000 we're gonna get him to. We're gonna get him to 2,000 rating, that's a little plan. Um, but I um, I really like the way he's played this. I mean, he's played a very good game. I'd say he's played much higher 
than his rating as 1650. What do you guys think? I think he's done done brilliantly. And I like this move, swap swap pieces off, and uh, that is a win on time. So well done, Yebjorn, good game. I don't know why I keep I go for Yebjorn to Bjorn, I don't know. Maybe I say Yebjorn because I'm like, yay, yay, Bjorn won, yay, Bjorn won. And I see that he said good game in the chat to his opponent. Um, I, I you know. I wonder. I, I wonder what you think about saying "good game" to your opponent. Uh, but good game, yay Bjorn! And I think it's now time to get him on. And what we're going to do? We're going to analyze his thoughts now. I'm going to try to get inside his mind, see how he's thinking. He played very well. See if we can improve anything. See if we can improve his way of thinking, in even the smallest way. And this is really going to take quite a long time. We're doing it with a, a, a fine comb. The reason I'm doing like this is the most famous school of chess is um, uh, is the Russia, the Soviet school of chess. The Soviet school of chess created the best chess players in the world. The Karpovs, the Botvinniks, these legendary players, and even these guys went on to teach the the Chinese players, and they they've improved. So, what their main advice was, the Soviet school of chess, their main advice was that the best way to improve is to look at your games and analyze them as deeply as you can. And this, they always did this without a computer because this is days before a computer. Find out where you went wrong and find out where you can improve and, and what you did right, where your strengths and weaknesses are. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's get him back on, shall we? Uh, and see what uh, he thinks about the game. So, okay, put these headphones back on now, I guess. So I can move, I can move, uh, that's not Bjorn. That's that's my summer dress. You can see there. So let's get rid of me in the summer dress and uh, try to get Bjorn back on now. And da -da 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 -da. yay! <laughs> yeah. Champion. Yeah, that was quite intense. <laughs> it, it was quite intense. But uh, how how happy are you with the game, Bjorn? Uh I'm really happy that uh, he played this line because again, this is uh, um, some of the openings in the London system that I'm uh, a bit uncertain of. And um, at the end, I, I mean, I felt like I had a good position all the way, uh, but I did not have everything under control at the end there. <laughs> I thought sometimes like I was uh, <laughs> had blundered uh, hugely, and then I like always found this one move that uh, saved me. But yeah. <laughs> so it, it but I'm got, really intrigued to hear what you think about this. So okay, so it got a bit messy, but I I, I think you play really well there in, in general, um, um, Bjorn. I mean, uh, maybe there's certain moments which we could have done differently, but I think in general that was a very good game. Um, okay. So so well done. Now Bjorn, we're all, I was also discussing uh, while while you were playing. Um, if we keep doing this on a regular basis, do you reckon we'd be able to get you to 2,000 on chess.com in six months? What do you think? I mean, you're, you're a very intelligent guy, clearly. You probably you probably get there without my help anyway, so I can claim it I can I claim it as my own. <laughs> but Six months? What do we, uh, reckon? Do we reckon? Let's say the end of the year, and uh, we'll set that as a goal. End let's of the year. It. Should we do it, yeah? Okay, cool. cool. And... <laughs> And also, what's your ELO rating again? Uh, in, you know, I, in... I think my long play ELO rating is like 1550, uh, but I haven't played uh, in in over a year, I think. So it's it, I think maybe it's like 1600, uh, like on actual string. Okay, and um, do you, how often do you play like FIDE rated long play games? Um... Not very often. Well, we, yeah. we play this, uh, yeah, not enough. Basically, okay. Uh, I don't play enough long long play games, basically, yeah. to improve. Right. Uh, so I think that's one of the most important things I could do to to improve. It, it certainly is. Yeah. I mean, just playing your tournament now and again above your level, I I would say. I mean, mm. uh, I mean, one of the main ways I improved. Just another little tip for anyone out there is when I was a lot younger. Uh, I would play weekend tournaments. So obviously, people don't always have time to do this. I mean, you know, but uh, when you're younger, you do have time, and if your parents can take you there. And I'd always yeah. play many sections above my standard or a section. So I'd probably always play the top section I could. Um, and 
I, you know, that would help me improve by getting battered many times and learning from my yeah, mistakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. So I'm going to share the screen. I've got this okay, little cool. trick now. Someone told yep. me, told us that trick last time. So uh, let's see if I can make sure I get the right one. And uh, let me know if you can see the screen. Okay. Yep. I see it. Okay. Yep. Brilliant. So, right. So we're now go through the moves and, um, so we had the London system, Bjorn. So uh, first of all, um, I mean, I've done a YouTube series on this. Anyone who wants to learn this, there's a free YouTube uh, series on this, only 20 minutes long or 30 minutes long, the video. So you can learn this and it's a weapon. I give a weapon against everything with this move. So you can learn it an hour and a half or you can buy the DVD. But Bjorn, your experiences with this move, what, what, what have they been? Uh, well, I think it's... Um... As you say in the in the videos, it's a system that you can play against uh, a lot of things. I, I used to uh, play E4, um, and but there's so there's so much theory because you have to learn how to play against the Sicilian and the Karakan and the French and and I mean this this London system you can basically play against anything. It feels like I, I think you completely hit the nail on the head. Um, I mean, in I've made this course the, the Master Method Two, and the first thing I say in that is basically, look, when you're picking openings at home, before you even pick an opening to play, you've got to ask yourself, how much time do you have to yeah. to learn the opening? I mean, okay, if you're going to spend five hours a day on chess, then I'd say play E4 and play the main lines, but you have to learn like 20 moves. The French defense, you have to learn lots of different stuff here. Um, yeah. Against the Sicilian, lots of different stuff there. Against mm. E5, so you've got it. You're basically increasing your method of learning by a lot. So if you've got time to do that, great. But if you're like Bjorn, who's creating escape rooms and running bars and restaurants, <laughs> you probably don't have that time. <laughs> so, so that that's why I think the London system is a great choice if you don't have a lot of time because you can play these two moves, and it's quite easy to learn. It obviously takes a long term to master, but you can do the same kind of plans against most of Black's moves. So. How have you how have you found the London system so far? Yeah, it's it's been working great for me. Um, well, I, I feel like yeah, it's uh, I definitely improved a lot uh, switching from E4 to to the London system. I also think like I I started off playing um, a lot of your I was watching your spicy uh, gambit um, okay. uh, videos yep. on test.com. Yeah, and and I played most of the, those lines and. I mean, I'm I'm usually an aggressive player, but I think uh, after playing those, um, I started with the tactics and the sacrifices a little bit too early for <laughs> for my own uh, good. Uh, so I think the the um, London system kind of I want to play aggressively, but playing this opening uh, at least I have like a foundation before I start this uh, you know this gambit and crazy attacks. <laughs> I, I think that's a good way to think. I mean, again, it's down to style uh, at the end of the day. I mean, a lot of the lines I, I give on chess.com are very aggressive and maybe a bit too aggressive for, you know, um, to have always. I mean, I wouldn't play them and this, but I think the London system, you can still... The great thing with this, you can play it attackingly, which a lot of people don't realise. You can attack with it, or you can play it very positionally. Um, we have a question from a pawn saying, do you put the pawn on c3 and c4? Well, the one main thing you do in the London system is you, I, you always nearly always go c3 and e3 because you try to create this pyramid here. And this is the key thing because you want to keep your pawn on d4 as your solid hold in the center of the board. Um, mm. But let's have a look what happens. So after c5, um, tell us your thoughts as we go along here. Yeah, I think I had a, a had a think here um, right away because this is one of the more challenging um, system to play against the London. Um, and basically, I was I don't I don't I wasn't even considering taking the pawn. I don't know if if it's if you can, but I wasn't really considering that. Good. Um, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that. I mean, you might be able to take the pawn, but the one bit of advice I give is. Um, this is now completely out of the setups that you know because we're talking yeah. we're talking about the triangle and the yeah. things that we know when you're trying to learn an opening and this goes to everyone whatever opening you're trying to learn you should look for familiar patterns that you can use in every game and by taking on c5 you'll be out of your familiar pattern mm. and uh, that's not something i'd recommend i mean i think black's absolutely fine against this probably in a number of ways as well bjorn 
Um, a very interesting line here. I mean, I, I'm not recommending it. I like the way you play, but maybe, you know, for higher level players, like if you're an IM or GM, um, is E4. This is a crazy line. Oh, okay. um, and the point of this move is um, if black takes on E4, we now play D5. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, the reason this is interesting is, um, and this is how as you get better as a chess player, you can incorporate things from different openings um, and use them in openings you know. I mean, this is yeah. really quite high level. I wouldn't recommend this until you get to at least 2200. Exactly. Um, but the idea of this, Bjorn, is if we flip the board around, I'll show you why this is relevant. Um, the Albion counter gambit goes d5, c4, the, the main move, and now yep. e5 here. And you, you, you might be able to see some similarity that when yep, yep. white takes on e5, we go d4. And this is, <laughs> this is quite a well-known gambit. Um, and this, this is a very interesting way to play as black. Uh, you, 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 know, you, you rely on your pawn. But if we actually go back to the game that you, you played uh, and we go back to the, the line, if we do the same thing here, we get the Albion counter gambit, but we have an extra tempo with a bishop on f4. Oh, okay. So right. it, it's 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 something, you know, uh, that I wouldn't recommend you play because you, you're not used to these positions. But for those of you who like the Albion counter gambit, maybe play that as black, then this mm. would definitely suit you. So again, you've got to get openings that link into what you like. Um, but let's move on. So after e3, yes, yeah. yeah, So I was uh, I was actually considering which uh, which uh, pawn to move here. Um, sure. I was considering e e three or c three, uh, and the, and my my problem is um, with this queen b six move uh, that uh, you face often early in the London system, and I wanted to kind of figure out what happens if you place that. Um, so that made me think a lot of uh, which pawn to move first there, basically. Well, I'm happy you say that, Bill, because everything you said, you're thinking precisely along the right lines and that's the most important thing as soon as black plays c5 in the london system you should always watch out yeah. for, for their queen coming out i mean this, this is just the main thing to watch out for and as a rule this is my basic rule of thumb so this is not always the case but i'd say in the majority 80 percent of cases it's mm -hmm. always best to move the e pawn now the okay. reason for that is if black does play queen b6 let's let's say straight away yep. um you can have gambit lines with knight to c3, yeah. which you can't do if the pawn's on c3. Exactly. You also have better development. Your bishop may can come out at some moment, which you can't do with a pawn on c3. So you have two possible moves. Now, if black plays this in this particular position, I think one of the moves I suggested there is probably quite a good answer. So um, which move... Uh, I mean, there's also here another thing that I, I've seen a lot of people play against this is pawn takes c5 now because you're gaining so many tempos okay. against the queen. Uh, this is the thing. You're, you're really, you know, you're gain, you're forcing that queen out. But another option here as well as taking on c5, Bjorn, what, what, what would another option be? And this is also a very common idea. Um, well, if, I think it's the uh, idea of knight, knight c3 and, and um, knight c, um, uh, sorry, knight b5. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, 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 uh, totally right. I, I really like knight c3. And if black does grab here, we can mm. see how um, well you, you even have a better move than knight knight to b five. Yeah, you can pick up the pawn as well here. Pick up a yeah. pawn, and this stops any checks with the queen. Black can't mm. check you. Yeah. You're threatening this check here. You have rook b one coming, and this is a fantastic position for white basically. Mm. So, yeah. so I think as a general rule, Bjorn, if if c five is played. Um, the way I try to do it is always go e3 first because it gives you these yeah. more opportunities. If black does come out with the queen very quickly, yeah. the rule of thumb is knight c3 is the first thing you should look at to, mm -hmm. to punish that. The second thing is taken on c5. You want to punish that move if black is very behind in development with other pieces. So right. um, hopefully that makes sense. I remember, I couldn't remember exact, the exact theory, but I remember some of these gambit lines where uh, it was kind of important to bring the bishop back to d2. Sure. Uh, and, and that's why I was uh, considering you to play e3 or not. Uh, sure. And I had to think if it, if it works or not, if you play this yeah. queen. But, I think I think general. This is one of the things we pick up from experience. You know, I mean, yeah. as a general rule, um, just for future, if C five is played early, E three is just is just the like you know eighty percent, ninety percent rule. There's some very there's some possibilities bring the bishop back, but that 
I wouldn't worry about that. And okay. if you just yeah. do some small calculation, E3 is, I, I think E3 is yeah. the best move as, as a general rule okay. uh, uh, to play. Let's let's move on. So your, yep, opponent, yep. your opponent took on D4. Now, We're at move three now, so this, this I know, is I know. <laughs> well, it, it's like we said, the, the, these things, you know, it was only move three, but this, you know, if we really want to improve at chess, this is how we've got to look at the games, really. I mean, I know... Exactly. Yeah, people might find it boring. It's not like we're playing blitz and having a laugh, but this is how we get oh, I better find at chess. It boring at all? I, I find it very interesting, actually. So yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, we still have some viewers as well, so maybe some people out there also feel the same, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. And hopefully, people can learn from this as well. I mean, it, yeah. at least people are getting kind of a free lesson with a half decent chess player. Um, mm. So okay, so now you took back. And what do you think about this exchange? Have you got any thoughts about this? Because one little bit of advice I give as well is whenever the pawn structure changes, and it has changed now, it has changed yeah. only very slightly, you should reassess things a little bit and think how it's helped you and how it's helped your opponent. And also, what this, you know, all the pros and cons. So I know we're doing this move by move, so this could take yeah. ages. But I mean, just as a general thing, um, what do you think about the exchange on, on D4 there? Uh. Yeah, well, obviously he has two center pawns now, and that's um, I guess that's good for him. Uh, but then again, I feel like now I have a tempo, so I can bring out uh, I suddenly bring out two um, two uh, well a knight and a uh, two minor pieces. Okay, uh, I mean well, the way I think about it, I mean I know people talk about the extra center pawn, and if we look at it, black has this extra central pawn now. Mm -hmm. uh, my bit of advice is, uh, I think that's kind of an overrated thing. I mean, if okay. you, if your if your central pawns are flowing, meaning that they have the possibility to ever flow. So if if this pawn can ever like you know come to e5, come to e4, mm -hmm. then it means something. But that pawn is pretty much always going to be blocked. So even yeah, in the ending, it, it's um, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't over worry about the central pawn, and okay. I think also Black's done something here which. I'm quite happy to see. Mm. Uh, again, low ready players often relieve the tension quickly, yeah. and that just makes our plans a bit simpler. Now, after knight c6, um, c3 I, I think is the correct move to play here. Let's just stick with what we know, c3, yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's just let's go bishop f5. I think bishop f5 is a good good move actually. Yeah, this is one of the other lines that I'm not. Um, I don't I often don't like as much. Uh, when I when I play the London system, sure, uh, and it it's kind of like uh, if I feel if I feel good, uh, I play the uh, queen uh, b3 uh, after a while and kind of attacking on that side because he's moved this bishop to the other side. Uh, if I feel um, not so good, I play bishop uh, <laughs> bishop d3. <laughs> <laughs> so so we got we got the wimps move bishop d3. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> or, or we got we got the the feel good move. Um, it, it feels like um, yeah this queen move. It's more. It feels like it leads to more tactical stuff. And it, if I can't find the right tactical stuff in the beginning, then I'm, I'm often just worse. <laughs> I, f I think, again, you, you summed up something that I mentioned earlier, just with your way of thinking there, that um, generally uh, you're thinking about either going queen b3, going for the more aggressive option that's going to pressurize your opponent, but it can backfire, or going yeah. for the safe option of bishop d3. Now, as a rule, always... The more aggressive option in nearly any position in chess is going to be the right way to play if you want to improve. Because if you always go for the safe option, how are you ever going to improve? Because you, you exactly. with a move yeah. like bishop d3, you're going to make exchanges. The more exchanges happen, the more equal, the more equal the position comes. Mm. And you've got to test your opponent as much as possible in chess. So as a rule, if you're really serious, everyone at home about improving, always play the most aggressive and most testing um option you can so i mean i also think when your opponent plays a move you should look at things that that uh, are wrong about his move and this bishop coming here this is actually a game magnus carlsen had this position bjorn against the polish number one player wojtacek uh, he had this precise okay. position i feel uh, and magnus banged out the move queen b3 here so if it's oh. good enough for magnus oh, okay. yeah. it's good enough for magnus bjorn it's good enough for us yeah yeah. So, was there anything you're worried about with Queen B3? Because I certainly, I certainly like. I, I, I mean, I think this is just a very good move here to be, to be personal. Yeah. To, well, so. to be honest, uh, I was, uh, I was going to play uh, the Queen there, um, 
Uh, I was going to do that anyway, uh, but I had some uh, thoughts about um, um, some of the videos that you made on the London system where, uh, well, I was kind of waiting for him to play e6 first and kind of uh, not sh um, being able to bring the bishop back. But, right. Yeah. Well, now that I think about it, I don't know if he brings it back and he's obviously not doing very well in the opening. I mean, if he brings it back in this position, um, again, the one thing, just following up from what I said before, always look at the most critical lines first. I mean, I, I would take on c7 if I can get away, yeah. on b7 if I can get away with it, because this is the way to get better. But as, as, a, as a rule, he's also, you know, moved his bishop twice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And it, it can't be something you should worry about this anyway. Even if you don't grab the pawn, you can even grab the other pawn here. So this would not be an idea that would worry me, even if I just continue developing knight f3. Um, he's, he's wasted time but as a general thing I think just worth remembering when a bishop comes out queen b3 is the way to play and yes it can be a bit scary but I think in this position there's no real way that black yeah. can, can take advantage of the of the queen coming out here mm. um, but let's move on a little bit so we had knight d2 this is fine knight to f6 uh, and now you went for knight to f3 okay so simple development it can't be wrong and now he played knight d7 and, and this move to me, yeah. That's... What did you think about that move, Bjorn? Well, uh, yeah, that was, um, I guess, the second time I had a, had a little think. Well, I did spend a lot of time in the in the opening, and I think he had a, a pretty big time advantage at this point. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I never seen this before, and it looked weird. And I assume that he's trying to play uh, e five at some point. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. You know, moving the same piece twice in the opening is one of those basic rules you try to avoid. So Black has moved the knight to f6, he's moved it to d7, he's losing time, and he's neglecting getting his king castled. So as long as he's not threatening e5, so we've got to work yeah. out if that's a threat. If he's not threatening e5, I'd, I'd already be looking at ways to maybe try to take advantage of okay. the slow play. And again, a, a plan that Magnus Carlsen played in this position is to try to take advantage of the bishop and there's a very key idea that you can do here to to because this is really his only active piece I, I i don't know if you agree with that because the knight on c6 yeah, yeah, is not very yeah. good so if we can get rid of the bishop we get rid of his only active piece it's got to be a good thing to do and also if we get rid of that bishop our light square bishop here can yeah. come to the most natural diagonal and this is our this is really where we want the bishop I like square yeah. bishop in the London I system. Struggling with uh, how to put it on that line, and uh, uh, so can you and, think of a way to try to get you know take of another yeah, way to take? I see off? now. Uh, well, after you uh, said this, I see knight knight h uh, four uh, would no. look natural. Knight h four is the way Magnus played this position again against Wojtacek, and uh, he he just grabbed the bishop. Um, and then he got his yeah. bishop to d3. And had the, he had the slight advantage, two bishops, and he got his bishop to this very lovely diagonal. And this is this is also something well worth considering when your opponent moves a bishop to f5. As a general rule, to gain the bishop pair, and so your bishop can get the d3. And and I think here it works quite well, Bjorn. I mean, anything you'd be worried about now, after after knight h4? Uh, not when I look at it now. No, not really. Uh, I don't know how. Well, I guess he has to play bishop to g6, or...? I think you'd have to play bishop to g6, and probably what I would do now, i just keep it simple, and I would eliminate that bishop. Yes, yeah. I do open up the h-file for him, but yeah. with my bishop on h2 and my rook here, he's only attacking with one piece. I don't have to worry about that. He's probably going to have to castle that way anyway. And yeah, I'm... and you're not castled anyway, so you can still yeah. castle the other way here. You can yeah. if you want to, yeah. But even if you castle kingside, I don't think you have to worry, because he's only got one piece... And yeah. your bishop on f4 will always stop that. Um, and I just put my bishop on d3 now, and I get my bishop to this lovely, lovely thing. I've got development advantage, yeah. two bishops. The game's not winning, obviously, but you've got a small advantage here, and, and that's all we can hope for out the opening. Um, mm. So maybe, maybe that's another, another thing to think of, yeah? 
So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> seems so simple when you explain this uh, stuff, but <laughs> it's it's only because you know. I mean, I've got I've got thirty two years of of yeah, yeah, playing, yeah. playing full time <laughs> chess and looking at chess, and you know, you pick these things up as you go along. But I know oh. we're spending quite a lot of time on this as well. <laughs> it's crazy, but I, I like the way you played anyway. Queen B three is good. Okay, yeah. So, now, so I did this now because uh, he couldn't go back. I think that was my okay. Uh, so that that, yeah. that make that makes some sense. But I wouldn't worry about the bishop going back yeah. anyway uh, as a rule. Because the yeah. other thing you've got to remember when your bishop's on f four, yeah, um, it's a lot safer to take the pawn on b seven because yeah. you're controlling the b eight square. So mm. you, you know you're not going to get any trouble with the rook attacking your your queen there. So mm. it's a lot safer. So I, I would, I would. So anyway, I like Queen B three as well, Knight okay. B six, and now his Knight is on quite a bad square. And there was another move I was suggesting here. I mean, the way you play Bishop B five is absolutely fine because you're trying to develop a piece. Yeah, but, I can, I can really figure out where to put the bishops. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I, I, I think it was okay the way you played it, but. Um, I would be looking at a way to take advantage of his clumsy knight because he spent one, two, three mm. moves to get his knight to a square to me where it can't move to. It can't move to a4 or c4 without losing something. Mm -hmm. And if you can get rid of that knight, you're going to blast through to b7. So I, I would be trying to already punish him a little bit here. Can you now think, rather than, you know, you don't need to develop the bishop yet because castling is not a priority because he's not attacking you. There's no open lines. Okay. But if can you think of a way to maybe exploit that knight there? And this is another common idea when you have a queen on b3 in this position. Okay, so, so I'm first considering uh, just a4, a5. Uh, but I think, yeah, I was worried he would just play... And what would he play? A5 maybe? Well, if you if you go A4 in the position, you are threatening to go A5, and then you're definitely taking on B7. Agree, agree with that one? Because I think his knight yeah. would have to come back D7. So yeah. maybe you're saying he would go A5. So the one thing you've got to consider is, does is this position, has this helped you, Mm. Or is this position better? Because basically, you've got the same. You've got a different pawn structure. If it, if you think it's benefited Black by playing a4 a5, you shouldn't play it. If you think it's benefited you, even in some small way, you should play it. Okay. So, who do you think it's benefited? And also, you need to have a reason why as well. Always have a reason when you're justifying it. I mean, it's another little tip for everyone at home when you're trying to, when you're playing an idea positionally. You should be able to verbalize, speak to your own mind about why why it, you know what what the reason is behind it if you can't do that you're probably playing the wrong plan you need to be able to have a reason like that square is weak i've created a weakness there i've forced mm -hmm. his piece back so here who do you think it's helped and why yes yeah, so what i'm thinking here now that i look at it is that uh, his uh, bishop on b6 looks you know, even more sad than it did um because it basically has to be defended by the queen yeah. and the queen can't really move anywhere Yep, that's true. So you've made the queen bad, and also, what square have you really weakened now? By by playing this move, and him playing a5, I think you've created an outpost in a position which you did not have before. b6 is weak, but there's another outpost in this position which wasn't an outpost before um, necessarily. So, um, so, so b5 then. B5, yeah. I mean, you know, you could yeah, now play bishop b5. Now you can just. Put something there and it stays there forever. Basically. It stays there forever, yeah. And if there was a pawn on a7, what possibility? You know, you have to watch out for a6 then, don't you? Um, yeah, which I, which in the game I had to look out for all the time. Sure, it's, sure. Yeah. Mm. Um, a a6, and I mean, I think here this has definitely helped you because your bishop's going to remain on that lovely square for life now. Um, right. um I mean, so you know, if any way you can do small improvements, mm. then. As someone said, it is worth doing. Someone did point out that maybe Black can go knight to a5. Maybe that is maybe that's something I didn't consider. But what about queen b5? Check? Queen b5 check. But maybe uh, hmm. yeah. Yeah, queen b5 check looks like a good move. If he goes knight back, we can still go a5. And yeah. Yeah. This this looks good to me. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, that looks good. So, okay. But let's let's move on with the game. Uh, really going through this with a fine comb, aren't we? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So bishop b5. Now I thought your opponent now played another very strange move, 
Um, I thought he should have probably played a six yeah, here. That was what I was expecting basically, and then then my idea was to uh, take the knight. Sure. And again, this um, it looked. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've damaged his pawn structure maybe uh, a little bit, and his uh, his C and A pawn are a little bit weak. His knight is weak, so this looked like something I could do. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I agree in some ways. I mean, I don't think these are big problems for him. Um, I mean, it's good that your bishop's covering b8 because his rook obviously would better yeah. go play here. I mean, I would have done this with black anyway, I think, because, you know, yeah. the bishop pair later on, he's got this, right. this thing which is quite good. Maybe it can even come into d3 in some situations. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, as white here, I'd probably want to keep the pressure up with something like knight e5. I'd want to keep, you know, keep attacking him. Yeah, that, that was my idea here, and basically okay. to put Good. pressure on these things yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you're still a bit better here, but I think you should probably still go for this a6. I mean, f6. Okay, yeah. F6 was a very strange move, but okay. I think you play naturally. You castle. There can't be anything wrong with that. You play g5. You put your bishop on the best square, and now if you played h5, what, what would you have done if you'd have played h5 here? Trying to trap your bishop. Um, yeah, I think I would just play h3. Well, if you go h3, it does give him the possibility. That's true. Of maybe playing g4. I mean, h3, mm -hmm. h3 looks it's possible, but I I think he has this extra possibility where he may open up the h5. Mm -hmm. It gets a little bit messy. I want to keep the king side more closed. And there's a. I mean, you're forgetting about my favourite move here, Bjorn, as a, as a big clue. Uh, what, oh, okay. So you play, uh, right? You play h4 right away. I think I'd play h4 because I want to keep the king side closed. I mean, if he goes g4, I, I I I've now got to think of the best route for my knight. I mean, I think he again. He probably it's probably logical for him to play this. But now that I've closed up, you know, the pawns are locked here. I think that's good because my king is now totally safe. So all I've right. got to think is where where to move my knight. I don't really want to. I, don't, I think I just want to keep it safe here because it feels like his weaknesses are in the center of the board. Maybe. I mean, mm -hmm. this this would be my natural idea. I don't know if it's best. And maybe. No, now... never, it was very instructive actually. I've never uh, kind of considered this h four move as a as a uh, defending move. Um, it can be it, it, like yeah. It's that actually when when your opponent goes g five and h five, which happens in a number of positions. Yeah, definitely. But, um, rather than playing h three, which still allows impossibilities to move these pawns, or yep. these moves are always hanging in the air. They're like you know a bad. They're like that something you know a bee sting that might get you at yeah. some point. Rather than allowing them, I always just like saying, look, I'm not going to allow any of that rubbish. I'm just going to go h four. You probably have to go g four. And now, when I move my knight, and I, I wouldn't put it on h2, because you've always got to think about the future of your pieces. Yeah. On yeah. h2, I might be able to come back to f to e3. But I'm thinking that he's weakened the f4 square, and I'd probably go try to put my knight upon f4 now, try to get okay. my knight to this square, where it mm -hmm. would attack you know, some squares over here. So I would be very happy for white now, because look at my king. Mm -hmm. You can never yeah. open up the position, and... Um, I should be able to manoeuvre my knight e3 like you did, or f4. So I think this would be the way to play personally, h4. Okay. Uh, something always to bear in mind, uh, basically. Um, mm. Okay, on with the game. So we had uh, rook, rook e1, good move, improving your pieces. Castles, I like knight to f1. Now, I thought this was a really clever move because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right here, I was like, uh, <laughs> as you always say, like you look at your pieces and figure out which ones are bad and which ones are good. And and my knights, I felt like uh, my knights were really bad. <laughs> I really didn't know how, where to uh, where to put them. So this was kind of a, also the rookie one uh, move helped this uh, rearranging of the knights. I, I think it's a very good move, and I, I think again you explain it really well. I mean. Uh... Like you know, something we talk about when if if it's not a tactical position and this is not, um, mm. it's more there are always tactics under the surface which you have to be worried about. But generally, when the position is quite closed, when both sides are castle, when the skeleton, the pawn structure is quite locked, you've got to think about your pieces. And mm -hmm. there's two things you should do: you should restrain your opponent's pieces and improve your own pieces. 
And if you look at your position here, well, your bishop is okay, I feel, on, on the g3 diagonal. Your bishop on b5 is, is, is good as good as going to get. But I think your knights are very bad. And I think you've done a brilliant move because your knight is has no future there. And I think by moving it to f1 and moving it to e3, you give it a great future. So I think that's a really, really good move, showing good positional understanding. So well done. I like that move. Mm. Um, so now, after here, knight e3, it gets interesting with f5. So, um, so this is where it gets crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't prepared for him uh, kind of pushing the pawns uh, no. at all. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, after knight takes g5, let me ask you, uh, and I'm not going to move the pieces because in a game we couldn't move the pieces, but what were you going to do if he plays f4 here? This is this is what I thought he was critical, and I think he wimped out here, which was his biggest mistake he might be doing well but i think he has to play f4 so what 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 move would you have played if he goes f4 in this position i'm not going to put the move on the board but everyone can see if black moves the pawn there let's try to discuss this without moving the pieces now because it's getting tactical let's yeah. try to uh, uh, yeah i think i i could just play um knight d6 and threaten the queen and also pick up the pawn if i want later what if he goes queen d6 there so we're looking at f4, uh -huh. knight e6, queen d6, because my queen is defending the pawn then. Mm. Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> See, th this is where I think, uh, you know, I think he should have played f4, yeah. because the way he played it just seemed bad. He's lost the pawn. And I think y you had to, you know, if you had a bit more longer time, this is one of those lines that you you know you should try to have covered um if if it's possible um but this 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 is what he should have played i think he should have gone f4 and queen d6 so i think you're probably okay but it looks mm. it looks actually like a complete mess to me i'll be honest i, I don't know how to I don't, I don't know how to evaluate it um somehow uh i think his f5 move was good i think he, he played the right line he played aggressively but the problem is he he, he started to play aggressively that yeah. yeah, but then he changed his mind. I mean, okay, so we're looking at here. Now, knight e6 may look like it's winning because that is one fork, and it looks really scary. But whenever you see a scary move, you've got to back it up with pure calculation. You can't just assume things. You have to not get lazy. It, we're, we all want to be lazy when we play chess. And, and trust me, I always get my worst results when I'm lazy in a real competition. This is why blitz chess is not good for your chess. It's good fun. And people get addicted to it. If you're serious about getting better, Blitz Chess never trains you to analyze these kind of ideas because you'll see this move and you won't look any further in a Blitz game. But in a real game, if you're playing in a tournament, you'd have to look further. You'd have to look at this position. You'd have to assess it. And you'd have to decide whether it's worth going for or not. So don't play too much Blitz Chess if you're serious about improving. Mm. Play it for fun, but not all the time. So, so, uh, so how bad is it really? Like, yeah, um, I am a pawn up, and if I uh, if I get the rook and two, uh, a rook and a pawn for two pieces, is it is it okay or? I think it's okay. I mean, I'm going to be totally honest and say I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I mean, I, 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 it looks just like a mess to me now. Yeah. Uh, um, rather than in the game, I think he was. I, I think I get a, a pawn, get the deep on at the end of that line actually. Um, well, you're going to take the rook here, so let's take the rook. Okay. So... Oh no no no! I'm taking the pawn. Oh, you're taking the pawn. Oh, sorry, taking. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's taking with the rook. Yeah. I'm taking. I'm taking the rook. Yeah. And then well, uh, well take the pawn. Well spotted. I didn't see that. So you've you've out calculated me again, Bjorn. No, no, no. That was just yeah. Well, <laughs> you're making you're making a habit I didn't see of this in the game, obviously. <laughs> and I mean, this this looks quite good right yeah because now i'm threatening the queen i have uh if he takes i take with a with a check with a check yeah uh, yeah yes i i agree i i i actually totally agree that you've got and also your material up you've got two pawns and a rook for the bishop and knight so materialistically your yeah. you're actually points up but you, you've got very nice pawn structure your pieces are good so you are doing well here so um i agree i mean <laughs> I, I think he should still have played it personally because yeah, yeah. I, I think this is an important decision to him. Even if he saw that line where where um, he could be worse, this is very important. And I, I said 
during your game, but simple chess is always good if 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 you're in a safe position with a safe advantage. But Black here has lost or gambled to the pawn, and if he doesn't now turn the complication switch on, he should right. just be worse and lose without a fight. So this is the kind of position where you should, where you should, you know, complicate as Black. This is when I would definitely play f4 and just say what the hell, because if mm. I don't play it, I could just be a pawn down. Someone's mm. also saying have a look at Bishop takes f4. Now the reason I wouldn't play oh. this is okay. that after rook takes knight e6, queen here, um, I think you have to take the rook anyway. Yeah. But you have less possibilities than you do in the game, and you should always keep as many possibilities. If you look at this position, you really have to take the rook. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the same variation. But by yeah. going knight to e6, I have some more possibilities. Maybe I can take the rook on f8. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter so much, but it's the same kind of thing. Um, now, after the game, after queen d7, this is where I think you made one mistake here, Bjorn. Okay. Um, and so this is where I think you were looking at your own ideas. So I, I like your knight maneuvering. You're concentrating on getting your knights to the best squares, but you're forgetting about how to restrain your opponent's ideas. And what is the mm. one move that he's trying to do? Well, you, I, maybe you saw the one move. Uh, the one move he's trying to do is um, f4, agreed? Yep. So if we can stop f4, we stop his queen coming in, we stop his bishop mm -hmm. getting active. Is there a way you can do that here? A way you can stop, restrain our opponent here? Is there a way we can do that in this position? Yeah, so uh, bishop f4 looks natural. Bishop f4 is probably a good move, yeah. Yeah. Any other moves? I must admit, I think you're exactly right. Uh, I was When he made this move, I was thinking like that's a very dangerous um, dangerous. Um, place to put your queen uh, on a binding like that so I was just like how can I how can I take advantage and exactly as you said I didn't uh, consider why he did it and uh, what his threat was so uh, yeah. yeah I mean I, I like bishop f4 um, yeah. actually I didn't consider this one in the game that might be even better than what I was saying in the game but I also really like just pawn to f4 oh, okay um, now that might look strange but you are a pawn up Mm -hmm. um, you kill his bishop on g6. If you mm. think about pieces, yes, your bishop on g3 is also a bit killed. Yeah. But you kill his queen. If you look at the pawn structure, because every time you make a pawn move, you've got to again, like I said earlier, reassess the pawn structure. Um, you've made one of well, you've made his e7 pawn really bad now because he'll never be able to play e5. Mm -hmm. I mean, that right. pawn is just dead. It's dead wood because he, he you know, you're always controlling that square. He can never play e5. I mean, that mm. pawn's kind of a waste of space. Yeah. Um, you have to look at the two outposts, which are e4 and e5. What I mean by outpost is, if we go back one move, having a pawn on f2, if he ever gets a knight into e4, mm -hmm. you can play f3. But as soon as you play f4, if he ever gets a knight here, you won't be able to get it away. So you'd have to consider, can he get a knight there quickly? But I don't think he can. On the other hand your knight can hop into the outpost there mm. quite quickly. So I think right. it's a safe move, and sometimes just restraining your opponent with a move like mm. this, stopping his counterplay, this yeah. would have been a nice positional way to just kill kill him, kill his play. Um, so I, I like f4 or bishop f4 there. Um, mm. Okay, anyway, in the game, knight c2. And now now he gets a bit dicey after here, bishop h4. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 how, how are you feeling here? I mean, you're probably okay, but it's a little bit scary, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah this was definitely scary. Uh, and, um, I mean, it, it looked to me like he had a lot of problems to fix himself. And I feel like my, my king is safe and all that. Uh, yeah, his queen is pinned, and uh, I don't know. Opening so much uh, in front of your king looks looked a little bit dodgy, but but obviously, uh, yeah, he has something going on here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think you know this is it reminds me of a Dutch in some way having a pawn here with a rook behind it, right? And, and his bishop's now free, and his queen's now free. So even if you're still doing well here, which you might well be doing, it suddenly got messy. And that certainly suits your opponent, as we discussed before, because when, when you're in control, you don't want to mm -hmm. make it messy unless there's a good reason. And now there's many ideas. I mean, I, I said queen g4. I don't know if that's the best idea. 
in the game. He might even, looking at the position again, have some sacrificial ideas with F3 and Rook takes F3. I don't know. Mm, you know, yeah. he's got he's got many ideas. You, I think you defended and played very well. Maybe you you are still better here, but um, it just gets a bit messy. So let's have a look. Bishop F6. And, and by the way, do interrupt me, Bjorn, if there's anything you want to ask me as we go along as well, um, uh, Bjorn. Yeah. So make sure yeah, you, you no, can. No, uh... You can always say, shut up, Simon, I've got a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w I will. Right okay. now, I'm just, my mind is kind of exploding from all the, uh, this position. I don't think I had enough time to no. really consider all the, um, all the details of this position. But Yeah, Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think you played well. I mean, I think knight f3 is good, queen g4, and I think you played well. You just simplified. You know, if you yeah. get, And I think now, again, you're doing okay. I don't know if you had something better there. You know, maybe he could, but I, I like the way you played this. And... Uh, I think you again. I can't criticize this at all. You you push his queen away. Um, I was considering bringing the bishop to uh, to e two here. Okay, but is that more of a like um, that strikes me as m yeah. more more of a I don't know like uh, a tricky move rather than a good move. Uh, maybe I'm trying to think of the right word. I can't. <laughs> My brain's gone. I like, uh, like, like a one, uh, one maybe one yeah one move, maybe a little bit artificial yeah. because yes you're threatening to move your knight but if he moves his queen now yeah, exactly right. um, your rook's now a lot worse because you blocked yeah. it in and right. your bishop I think was okay on b five because in mm. some cases you can swap um, so I think I prefer the way you played it because at least the way you played it um, after queen f five. Your rook is better, as we see. You're able to get it in here, and your bishop always has. Your bishop actually was better on b5. So I think yeah, h3 yeah. is good, and maybe h3 in this position, it's just good to have a square for either your king or yeah. your knight as well. So I think, I think, um, yeah, I think this 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 move h3 is much better. I think bishop b2 was a bit superficial in in yeah. some some respects. Uh, is that the word I was looking for? S uh, snow. I can't ever say your name. How do we say this, Bjorn? Snoob Joel. Your pronunciation is probably much better than mine. Uh, Snowbell Joel, Snaybell Joel, <laughs> is that right? Something like that. I oh, don't. Snubber Joel. Snubber Joel. It's like a Norwegian. It could be a Norwegian name. Yeah, Snubber Joel. How do you how would you say it in Norwegian? It, well, Snubber is like a trunk, like an elephant trunk. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Snubber and then Joel is uh, that seems like an English word, but okay. I'm not sure if it's Norwegian or Scandinavian, but okay. uh, Snubber. Snobble Joel uh, seems uh, the way I would Joel. say it. Snobble Joel. Okay. It's Swedish, okay. Swedish, <laughs> okay. Snobble Joel. So it's like Elephant Joel. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Elephant Joel. Good. I'm getting <laughs> a lesson in Norwegian as well. <laughs> so. Oh, you will. Okay, so it's uh, Snobble Joel, <laughs> which is a Swedish name. <laughs> okay. Okay, go on. Snobble Joel. Yeah, the important people want to, want to have the names. Elephant <laughs> 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 Hydrox Metabolite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to teach me a bit Norwegian each each week as well. I, I know Tusen Tack and Tack. Oh, that's, yep, very and good. That's about <laughs> it. What's 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 beer? Is beer Ull. just sorry? Ull. Sorry, were you okay there? You have something in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was that? <laughs> I, I was a bit worried about you there. You, you're okay. <laughs> so, say that. Two letters. It's yep. the it's the uh, like in bird. Like when you say uh, bird, uh, we have uh, we have a letter for that. So it's like O uh, with a with a line uh, across it, and it's pronounced uh. uh. Okay. Just like in bird. Uh. Okay. So that's that how you say that's how you say bird. And er is just uh, uh and then l. Uh, er l. Er uh, l. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say beer? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are, are usually all right in English, so. <laughs> look, Bjorn, I think you're probably going to learn more chess than I'm going to learn Norwegian with my <laughs> with my pronunciation skills. I think I should just give up on the idea of, of, of learning Norwegian. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put that one on the back burner, shall we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. Anyway, so let's go on. And I think now you play very well. Um, I can't really criticize much until maybe a little bit later, but rookie seven, great move, improving your position. Rookie one, great move. And now, well, now, did you miss knight c8? Be honest. Uh, yeah, I don't have to be honest. Oh, no, no, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I did. I, I saw it like, uh, when I dropped the queen, I mean, 
I was all like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, but I think you must still be doing I, okay. I thought here. first I could actually. I thought first uh, I'm okay because I can play uh, Queen D7, uh, yep. but then I saw that doesn't work at all. <laughs> oh, because he takes the the rook, yeah. Exactly, and yeah. then also protects the queen. <laughs> now I'm going to give you a bit more time here, Bjorn. I do think you're at least winning the queen with a series of checks here. So a little tactical okay. change. I know you're a bit under the clock. I mean, you still had three minutes thirty-four. So yeah, yeah and he was under the he was down on top he, here. he was really. But maybe you're thinking a little bit too much safety first here because you got shot by a move. And I think whenever you, whenever anyone gets hit by a move they didn't see, they're gonna like have a little moment of panic. Um, yeah. And you got out of it okay. With you know, I was I was considering uh, rook uh, e eight here if that's what you're. Talking okay, about. so why didn't you play rook e eight? Um, let's have a look. Let's analyze. So in my calculation, it didn't really work. Uh, okay. He he would um, well he would take yeah uh, and then another rook yeah captain was what I was considering Which and then he would play king uh, king g seven yep. and then I oh okay I could play queen queen f eight okay mm -hmm. and what does he have to play after yeah. queen f eight and then king g six only move. Okay, can you see a good move there? I think, yeah, I think this is where I stopped and I didn't see anything more. So this is uh, the visualization skills that are not good enough then. Well, this is another thing that everyone needs to do. And I mean, you're a bit, I mean, I can understand because you, you, you know, you're playing the game. It's a lot easier when you're watching games, as I find when I'm playing it. You know, I always, I miss lots of tactics, so I can't blame you at all. But, you know, you know, practicing calculations, go on chess.com and practice their calculations. Uh, they've got great, you know, become a premium member. They've got a great tactic series. Improving your vision, being able to just, it's, it's like a skill. If you if you box, you, you train. You've got to train your mind. And the, the, mm. if you can see that one move further, you'll become that much better player. So tactics is really important. And in the position, after rook here, tick. So we're going to go through it one more time, just in case anyone got lost there. There is, and people are spotting it in the chat, but don't look at the chat. You probably will now, Bjorn, but there is a move. Rook check no, no, here. I'm just the board, so I'm not. <laughs> okay, and, I, and again, if you're ever doing this at home, if you're ever trying to solve a puzzle, do not move the pieces because you're not going to learn anything. You've got to use your mind, uh, your brain. You know, you've got to hold the information in there. And after check, so we'll talk through what I'd be thinking, and Bjorn just explain it perfectly, and we'll see if Bjorn's going to get it. Bishop takes. Rook takes bishop check. King mm -hmm. g7. The queen comes in, queen f8 check. The king only has one square, king g6. And that was a very simple move after king g6 there, which at least... Well, okay, right, I see it now. So it's uh, knight, uh, knight h4. Knight h4 check, it's, yeah. It's on the spot, basically, yeah. It wins on the spot. I mean, you win at least the queen. And uh, yeah. it sees that it's just that one more move. You've seen that one more move? Then, yeah. Uh, you, you really got it. And let's have a look at that on the board. So we've now solved it. So if we go check... Um, and if we go, if we go, it doesn't matter. If Black plays King G7 here, it's the same thing. We go yeah. check, and we go yeah. check. We win the Queen, so it's the same thing. So Black probably should grab the Rook, and now because the Black King is so exposed, look at all these pieces over here. This is the reason why <laughs> tactics should work. They're disgusting. Yeah. And after here, check here. We have Knight H4. I may be even wondering if Queen G8 is going anywhere as well. Uh, but knight h4 is going to be good enough to 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 win the game here clearly um yeah. now i'm just i want to i want to create a nice checkmate here you know i'm always looking for a bit of beauty <laughs> but uh can we create a nice checkmate here i don't i don't i'm looking for it but i'm the position i'm looking at bjorn is if king here okay i just you know i like looking at these stupid things taking the queen is winning we can stop our calculation there exactly yeah um so we don't need to look further but in a game situation if i had half an hour on the clock I'd be mm. calculating now. Let's just have a look. This check, king here. This check, queen here. And I think we have queen f4. That's quite a, quite a funny one, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, but okay. I mean, uh, that's a li little bit of, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of craziness there. Um, but okay. I mean, uh, in the game, you played it safe with rook c7. Maybe it's just a time situation. I can't fault that. Um, knight d6. And here... Can you see a better move than queen e7? Because again, I think you panicked a little bit here, a little bit. You saw that he's threatening your queen and threatening your bishop, and you thought, right, I've got to defend. 
But always yeah. look at the piece your opponent. This is the first thing everyone should do all the time. Look at the piece your opponent just moved and see what it's threatening, but also see if you can take that piece. Very simple. I can just pick it up if there's no... I think so. I think you can just say, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <Cheers. laughs> but, I mean, the way you played it, uh, it is, you, saw, you saw a good line, and it is a good it's line fun. as well. Yeah. You know, you know something. What I think is uh, happening here, and this happens, um, yeah. this happens a lot to me, and I think uh, a lot of people as well, mm -hmm. uh, is that I'm I'm playing on his time. Um, sure, big mistake. I see he has a little time, and when I do that, a lot of times I start playing on his clock. Like I, I start moving really fast because he's down on time. I don't know why it, it shouldn't be that way, but it's just something I do. <laughs> this is one of the biggest mistakes um, that many people uh, encounter in tournament play as well something I, yeah. I i encountered a lot now there's a rule that as soon as i heard this rule it clicked uh, and you should stick to this rule and it was in the first time i heard this rule was in one of my favorite ever chess books and if you haven't got this chess book i hope you can still buy it it's called chess for tigers have you heard of this book uh, bjorn no. okay go and get yourself a copy bjorn it's online um, okay. it's probably, you can probably get it on eBay for like five pounds. Chess yeah. for Tigers by Simon Webb, and it's yeah. such a fun book. I mean, I, I read it as a kid, so I don't know. It's not really a kiddie's book, but the one rule he gives in there is that um, you should only move quicker um, if you are losing or in a very bad position. If you're better mm. or if you're equal, there's absolutely no reason to play in your opponent's time. Because mm. you know uh, things go wrong, but if you if you're in a worse situation, if you're really bad and you're trying yes. to swindle, that's right. the only situation where you should play in your opponent's time and be aware of this in yeah. your own games always. So if you do notice you're playing your opponent's time, then you just got to stop it because it will mm. you will be uh, punished for it. So uh, apparently yeah. you can get the Kindle uh, edition for six dollars ninety nine. There you go, a great book. Okay, um, cool. But nice. it's just a little bit of vice there. So, yeah, I think it's just something to bear in mind. And um, we'll end the game. Let's have a look how it finished. So it went now. You started picking up pieces here, Bjorn, which is quite nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rookie eight, and you said, thank you very much. Queen d6. <laughs> okay, I'll take that one now, sir. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> and, and then after queen e7, uh, the jo jobs are good, and yeah? So that yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I have to say to everyone, this this always goes on a lot longer than I think. I don't know, I don't know about you, Bjorn. Is it, is it always longer than you think these streams? Um, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> well, oh, well, this is the longest game I've had so far. I think. Uh, I think yeah. most of the games have been like uh, over pretty quickly. But uh... <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, one thing, one thing I think we should try, Bjorn, is um, maybe we we'll do two more or one more, maybe two more of the things in the same theme as this. So we'll stick yeah. with your openings and we'll do okay. exactly the same theme because I think you I think you are learning things and hopefully people at home are, are learning things as well. But then I think when we come to our fifth, sixth lesson, maybe yeah. I'll, I'll bring out then some exercises for you because then I'll have an idea about your style of play, maybe where your weaknesses okay. are, maybe exactly. where what, what areas of the game you could uh, improve on. Um, it's good, I think, first of all, for a coach to have a look at the opponent's games so they can understand what they need mm. to learn but maybe in one of these lessons I'll, I'll prepare a whole thing where we just test you on stuff and get your thoughts does that sound scary but good no no that sounds awesome yeah sounds okay perfect. okay good you, so you, by the way i was uh, when i turned the stream on uh, after the game i heard you commenting me on saying good game <laughs> is that something you don't uh, want to do <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought it was like a polite thing to do but <laughs> oh no no no! I, I sometimes I, I yeah I I've I think I've had that when people have been sarcastic, you know, oh, okay. myself. I've had that in in one situation where it was probably that guy chess shop or some idiot like that, oh, you know, okay. where, where I blunder my queen, and um, he goes good game, you know. So in okay. in certain situations, I think I've had that before, and they they you know they're just being and they're like oh bad yeah that wasn't a good game and I and I just want to, <laughs> you know I want to rip their head off, but I, yeah. I think I think it's absolutely fine. In, in most situations, of course, but um, I, I think I was just sort of telling a story maybe where uh, I found it a little bit rude when I blundered my queen and my opponent said, yeah, good game, mate, good game, well played, yeah, well played, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> so yeah, in that situation, but uh, in general, of course, it's okay to say to say good game, you know, no yeah. worries there, and um, Bjorn, I mean, we've got to finish a little bit early today, guys, um, yeah. but we, I'd like to, cause, just because I've got, I've got some stuff to do, uh, but Bjorn, I, um, so, 
I think before we do go, I mean, I'd like to hear any final thoughts or what, what anything you think you've learned. Maybe you haven't learned anything, if you can think of anything, or what you think you'd like to do as well. Because I want to hear your feedback, basically. Anything, any feedback whatsoever, if you can think of any. I'm putting you on the spot now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are. Uh, well, yeah, I feel like I've learned uh, a lot, basically. Uh, okay. uh, specifically, um, well, there's uh, things in the opening that I learned, and specifically, uh, this this H four move is a defense move. This is something I'm definitely kind of have in my uh, repertoire now. So, uh, which I didn't at all. I, I would never consider it because I never thought you could do that. <laughs> so, eight, I mean, it's good because if you think about it logically as well, this move H four using mm. one pawn stops two pawns. Yeah. You know, it's it's actually, and you can get this in so many different openings. I mean, uh, I'm just trying to think of cases now. Yeah, and I, 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 there are so many games I can remember that I've lost because of like this uh, pawn attacks or pawn storms against me, exactly. uh, yeah. which I don't really know how to defend against. So yeah, I mean, for example, one sort of case here. I mean, uh, let's just play a couple more moves. Let's say you had, let's say you're playing black here. So I'm going to flip the board around. And now you know this is this is exactly the same principle here, and, and you're black in this position, so mm -hmm. um, your right. po your opponent's just played h4, so he's got the same situation. He's mm -hmm. maybe threatening to trap your bishop, or at least force you to take on g on b1, and maybe you would have thought of h h6 before, but yep. the move I'd certainly be considering here is h4 because I I want my opponent to close down here and give away the f5 square. So yeah. it, it, it's certainly something to consider. It doesn't work all the time, but in, in most cases, it, it, it is a good move to play. And you can get it in lots of different positions to, to basically contain two pawns with one pawn, which has got to be a yeah. good deal uh, in general. So, yeah. Um, okay, and what, what's when's your next sort of... Have you got any club matches coming up, Bjorn, or anything? Yeah, well, since I just moved to Frederikstad, I haven't really gotten into the, um, to the um, chess club here yet. Uh, so I'm planning to do that... Uh, uh, hopefully next uh, Thursday. I think they're playing on Thursdays, so I'm gonna try to uh, see see what they're doing and um, what's going on there. Okay, cool. Um, people are saying you look like Martin Freeman a bit, Bjorn. Do, do you know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> did you, do you know Martin Freeman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Uh, what's not the man, but the other one, right? Watson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what's your opinion on that? Uh, <laughs> it's hard when people start telling you you look like somebody because you never you never agree. <laughs> no, I know. I, I don't. I don't actually you look like yourself, right? But yes, but I don't mind. <laughs> He's I'm, a good looking guy, so I don't mind. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going to show you that um, Sherlock's um, uh, companion, and this guy is supposed to look like Benedict Cumberbatch. Is it Cumberbat? Um, my friend Tiger Hillett Person. I'm just going to try to get a picture up of him. Um, those of you who who uh, know, I mean, he looks a bit like if you can see the picture here, a bit like. Okay, you can see that picture in the thing, and then I'm going to show you a little bit, and then we're going to show you Sherlock. So we could we could have a chess, we could have a chess, um, and then we see, then we got yeah, there's some similarity there. So I'm thinking we could have a chess Sherlock sort of themed yeah. thing going on. <laughs> I don't I don't think it looks so much, but anyway, um, all good. The one person uh, most people tell me I look like is this uh, guy from uh, Westworld. Uh, like, have you watched the show Westworld? I have, I have, yeah, I have watched it. Yeah, so. The guy with the white hat, people often tell me I look like. Okay, the guy with the white hat. Let's try to get him up, shall we? Guy with white hat. <laughs> Yeah, white is... white hat or the okay let's see if we can find him is he the real evil evil one no he's well i think well he starts off that's the good one well i probably should uh oh, don't worry we, we can give it away <laughs> oh yeah i know the guy i know the guy ah yeah ah this guy yeah okay okay yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> ah that's that's interesting I, I, there is a bit of similarity there i think a little bit i'll, I'll bring a, 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 like a cowboy hat to the next stream and then we'll see <laughs> brilliant do it do it <laughs> um i think so but i don't know what i do actually have like a, a, a birthday party for one of my best friends and he has this hat theme so I guess this is a great idea for that. So now <laughs> that is, you can you can you can go as this guy, yeah. So you can uh, yeah, exactly yeah, perfect. <laughs> I like it. 
we've got that already. You've got your fancy dress already sorted. <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny. I, I don't know where this stream's gone now, Bjorn. It, it's gone a bit <laughs> tangent. I mean, it started off with you know a bit of teaching, and now you now we're talking about you know fancy dress parties and what we're going to dress up as. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry to everybody in the chat. No, all good. <laughs> but look, Bjorn, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, and um, I might not be available next week. So I'm filming some DVDs, but. I, the week after, definitely, if you're up for it in a fortnight to do a similar kind of thing, if, yep. if you're free, would that be yeah. cool? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, Bjorn. Well, I'll let you say goodbye to everyone. And um, I, I'm then going to say, I'll say goodbye to you as well, Bjorn, and I'll, I'll catch you soon, mate. Yeah. So, um, but I'll let you say your goodbyes, and then I'll, I'll just end the show today, basically. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for uh, following the stream. And uh, I hope you learned something as well as I. So, yeah. Bye. Okay, cheers Bjorn, and I'll catch you soon Bjorn, yeah? So. Yep. Okay, cheers mate, bye. Right. Cheers.